soft you can warn me or signal that it's either or, but I think we'll be okay with, with volume. I'm going to remain relatively static here because I believe that the recording goes from the, that edge there of the screen to this edge of the table, so this is my range. <laughs> I don't have a follow camera here, so follow me camera, so sorry about that. Um, the, I'm pleased that this is being recorded because I think it will be useful for people to go to revisit or perhaps go back to bits or people who are not here can have a look at sections of the presentation that they might want to see subsequently. Um, just quickly a bit of a background. Yes, I'm on the, the Senate Examinations and Assessment Committee at the University of Cape Town. My role in SILT, which is the Center for Innovation and Learning and Teaching, is as the coordinator of academic staff development in the, in the institution. Um, so uh, my focus, my aim is to focus on the implications of issues to do with assessment for staff development, which doesn't of course mean that we're not also student facing, because as staff that is our primary role to be student facing in our work. My, my background is actually, I come out of a psychometrics background, which for some people is something of a swear word. Um, but we have moved in, from a psychometrics to a background into where I am now is to, say, is to say that I've taken the work into a much more sort of social practice space. So for me, assessment as an activity is much, very much I see as a social practice. So it, has, it, it is imbued with interpretive capacity and it, um, has, it has power dimensions in it and so on which I'm not going to go through into, to go into in a great deal of detail in this morning's presentation. I want to stick more to the theme of what we're going to talk about. But I also want to create a space, hopefully in the next two hours, where you have a chance to ask questions or to contribute comments, observations, and so on. I always say at this moment, uh, give me a chance to say something first <laughs> before you ask your questions, because I want to try and sort of just give a sense of where I'm going with the presentation. But I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that people are coming from a, a wide variety of backgrounds here with a wide variety of needs, questions, observations, etc. So it is possible and probably likely that we're not going to cover every piece of the terrain during the course of the next couple of hours. But what would not be useful, I think, <coughs> is if we get to the end of two hours and you have a particularly burning question, interest area that you feel is not being covered and that you don't get a chance to at least talk about it or air it in this, in this forum. So please do ask your questions. It would be, I think, as I say, counterproductive if we come to the end of two hours and, and certain key issues that people feel very um, strongly about, animated about, and not being dealt with in the, in the course of the presentation. So I'm going to invite you 
to, to see this as a relatively informal space. Um, this issue of assessment and the issue of, of <coughs> taking assessment into online spaces has become particularly <coughs> pertinent at the University of Cape Town just now, because just yesterday we suspended activity there for yesterday and today. And um, yeah, I suppose what, I'm, what, I, what I want us to think about carefully here is, is what, what there's a particular kind of discourse that suggests that placing everything into the online space becomes a sort of panacea. In other words, if we can't do things in a face-to-face -face space, then let's just put everything online. And so I would like us to just trouble that notion a little bit today, talk a little bit about that and what it means and so on. And I'm hoping to raise some of those issues. I've got three kinds of components to what I want to say today. One, firstly, uh, is I'm going to talk about some assessment principles in a general sense because of my background, because of my interest. For me, my interest is in assessment design, and I think assessment, I don't want to wish to be a sort of proselyte here, but I think assessment is extremely important. And the point which I hope is going to emerge during the course of the day is that assessment practice, assessment discourse, assessment consequence, if you like, should be as much a part of the discipline as the content and so on is. So it makes no sense for us to, to teach us a course, a discipline, an area of, of, our, of specialism if we don't also teach about assessment and what assessment means in that discipline and so on. So that's one part. The second part is I want us also to look at comparisons or differences between formative and summative assessment. I have a strong sense in my own work and in my developing, and, and Ian Schroeder is a former colleague or UCT colleague of mine who will say, who will know very well that I'm not an expert in the online space. My space is assessment. But what I, what I want us to look at very carefully is, and, and what I'm going to suggest today, is that the online space is a particularly valuable space in terms of formative assessment. I think it can play a very strong role in the development of students' thinking, uh, and uh, conceptions and uh, approaches to the discipline in the online space. Of course, it also allows, and I don't want to jump the gun out, also allows for different kinds of engagement <coughs> in assessment on this continuum, and that's how I see it, from formal to, to informal assessment, from formative to summative assessment. So I'm going to talk about that as a second focus. And then thirdly, we're going to look specifically at the online space, and I'm going to come back to that issue of what I think the online space allows, enables. And I really, um, in that sense, I think it's an exciting space, but it's not, as I say, it's not necessarily the sole all. Uh, it does not necessarily mean uh, that we can simply put everything online and assume that we will have the same kinds of impacts and so on and results in terms of our own practice and also the, the, the development of student learning. Okay, so. Why do we assess? And that's really important as a heads up, as a front end to what I'm going to be talking about later in terms of putting things in an online space. I think it's really important for us in both the face-to-face -face space and the online space to be clear about the different purposes of assessment. I've only raised some of them here, um, there may be others. But basically what this slide is telling us that, that is that assessment serves purposes that range from formal to inform and serves purposes too that we may well be aware of, especially in the present spaces, that serves purposes that are both student facing and staff facing, and possibly even institution facing. I would imagine that if there are many people here from institutional type offices in the university space, you will often think of assessment as a way of providing information to the institution as a whole about both student development, progress, and also staff development. So it's a really critical element in the, in the assessment space. So what you're looking at here is a, a set of, of conceptions of assessment that range from quantitative type conceptions, in other words, that say things like assessment is about checking how much students know, or perhaps even what <coughs> students know in a kind of a cumulative <coughs> sense, in a quantitative sense, right through to a much more qualitative dimension, which is about assessment playing a role in telling us something about development, both student development and our own development as lecturers, and our own development as an institution. So, <clears throat> so I like uh, to see assessment 
as being ecosystemic in its, in its orientation. It is part of a complex, multidimensional <coughs> organism called the university, called higher education for that matter. And it, because it is multidimensional and multifaceted, it becomes quite difficult sometimes, I think, to make claims about what we know, for example, about student learning from an assessment practice. I don't want to make this overly complicated. I don't want us to walk away from here at the end of two hours and say, oh my goodness, we've raised so many difficult issues that I don't know what to do anymore at all. Now I'm going to stop doing assessment. I think some people might like that idea, but, but that's not the purpose. The purpose is much more to say, how do we respond to a multidimensional, <coughs> multifaceted landscape? And I'm suggesting that the starting point for that is, <coughs> excuse me, is to know why we're doing assessment at all. What is the purpose? And there could be different purposes in different situations. I also want us to be careful too about that, is not to be reductionistic about assessment. It's not necessarily just uh, reducing assessment to something that is, that is completely measurable at all, on all occasions. We also, I guess, need to understand that what, what it is, what the limits of assessment might be as well, and it would be the same in the online space. What does the online space allow us to do, and what does it not allow us to do? So what can we claim, and what are we not able to claim from that space? So what I'm looking at here briefly is then a student-facing thing, as I was suggesting, student-facing purpose for assessment. So we might have to do assessment, obviously, to make a judgment about students highly interpretive judgment, a highly social judgment. Um, we do that sort of work. We also do work in the assessment space to tell us something about our own lecturing. And we might also, and I think that this particularly in the online space is becoming more and more current, we do a lot of analytics type work through the assessment regime now that we were not able to do in the past. So by that I mean Connecting data, and I'm sure you've heard of these things, and perhaps even do make use of them in your own practice. Collecting a whole lot of data about students' online presence in relation to both assessment, lecture activity, classroom activity, uh, group work, intersection between, between all of these things. And those, <coughs> we claim, to have some kind of, to, 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 to allow us to build some evidence base about the extent to which students are either at risk or not at risk in terms of the courses they're doing. I'm a bit nervous about that space personally. Um, I think we're moving in the direction of what is called now, anyway, machine learning. Um, that stuff about that if you, if you capture screenshots of people in terms of what they do and where they are, you can tell, you can be quite predictive about what they're going to do and what they're going to need and so on. I'm not suggesting that we're moving in that direction, but I've certainly heard claims in the higher education sector that the, the, the capturing students' behavior in an online space and how they respond to, for example, assessment activity will be sufficient for us to make predictions about whether they're going to pass or fail in courses or, or whole programs for that matter. So we just need to be a bit aware of those things and also probably wary of those kinds of practices. Thank you. I also think that, that what this is telling us is that it's telling us something about whole institution practice. So, we, so what the online space does in terms of assessment now, in my view, is, is that it gives us a very strong ability to record, uh, to reflect, to look at feedback, um, to, <coughs> to make um, predictions, if you like, around the recording that we do. And I'm sure that that is um, something that, that, that uh, is, is going to become much more ubiquitous, much more widespread in higher education as a whole. Um, we have these things are now on record, like this very presentation. Sorry, I just remembered, did somebody switch the record button on here? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> to, to 20 minutes into the piece. Um, <clears throat> so this is on record. This is, will never go away. It's at once, at once sobering, at another point frightening to say that that is how we can see this. But, but the advantage in the online space is that student responses to assessment are forever too. So we can both we can make use of those for learning development purposes, but we also need to be careful about what we do with the with what with, with those snapshots, which is that which is in effect what they are. I also think that both in the face-to-face -face and online space, assessment can serve the purpose of promoting and modeling thinking, but it can also enable us to reflect on our own aims and purposes and goals. So, 
both in the face-to-face -face space and in the online space, what I think we're learning as an organism at the University of Cape Town is we need to be very clear about our assessment purposes. And it might sound strange for me to say this, but there are many of us as academics who do not necessarily reflect on these on a regular basis. Which is not an accusation, it's simply I think that it's not necessarily part of the discourse. We haven't grown up as academics in our disciplines with, with, with thinking about what assessment is for and what it's, what it's meant to promote and who, and, who is, and who it's for. I also think in the transformative space that we seem to, that we are occupying now in higher education, there's going to be more and more talk of and concentration on issues of why do we do assessment at all. Which begs another question which I hope we will discuss and talk about in today's workshop or today's seminar. Um, and that is, why do we put so much emphasis on an end of year examination, for example? I think the end of year examination has been a peculiar, has had a peculiar effect, if you like, in, in the transformative space. It's both, I mean, interestingly, and this is my personal view, uh, the, the student protests of the last couple of years have in a kind of have had a, a good unanticipated outcome. They've enabled us to think about assessment practice, and I think they've also particularly enabled us to think about why we do assessment or place so much emphasis in the assessment regime on this end of year examination. Why do we hold that as so sacred? What is it that's what is it imbued with in the assessment space that makes it both so important and therefore, especially in the current space, so vulnerable? And what happens when it, when, it, when it collapses entirely, as we've had happen over the last couple of years in the sector? Okay, so, so purpose is really important, and I'm going to come back to purpose in a moment. But I also want to draw a distinction, and I think it's a really important one, especially when assessment goes online, between formative and summative assessment. For me, Assessment, the differences between formative and summative assessment are not so much about when the assessment event occurs as, to, as about why the assessment event occurs. So therefore, immediately, if we think about this challenge about putting summative assessment at the end of a course or the end of a year, we can move that if we think about assessment in terms of why do we do it at all. We don't have to necessarily have assessment at the end of a course. We can have it somewhere else. It can take a different form, for example. It doesn't necessarily have to be a written examination or an examination that is written that is placed in an online space for people to engage in. We need to be thinking very carefully as a social practice and purpose why we do this the way we do it. So if, for example, the challenge is to move assessment into an online space, we, we need to be thinking why are we doing it and what, is, and what purpose does it serve? If it's formative, to, put, to draw a sort of fairly simple distinction, the, the, the purpose of assessment is developmental. So the whole concept of formative assessment is about what, what can we see that looks like change in student learning, whatever that student learning might be, that has occurred as a result of the response to a particular form of assessment. In summative assessment, we're taking a kind of snapshot view. We're saying, what is, what is the what do students know, or what can they do, or what do they give evidence of in an assessment practice that, that we believe is true at this particular point? And why is that important is because it really goes to the inferences we make around the assessment event. So if, and this is, these, are some, these are some quite scary judgments which we as higher education academics make about students in the assessment space. We do one two-hour examination, for example, at my institution, and make a range of very, what I think are scary, sometimes dangerous, and sometimes accurate claims about what students know and can do as a result of that two-hour assessment. Very interesting that. It's also very interesting to me when I go back to academics who say to me in, in workshops or seminars of this kind, who say to me, I set this examination at the end of first year course, for example, and halfway through second year, the students don't know anything that they responded to in the first year examination. So why do it? Why have that as a form of assessment? Yes, I understand I'm not naive as to think, suggest that, we do, we, that there are not purposes or reasons for doing it that way. We have compliance mechanisms. We have 
um, standards and professional bodies that we have to report to in certain disciplines and the like. We have to make those kinds of judgment calls. It's also obviously a lot more convenient to do assessment in that kind of mass scale way. It, ma it, makes, it, it makes sense to do it that way. If we have classes of 1,500 students, we can't necessarily take a developmental view of each individual student's learning through the assessment practice. So we understand those things, but I'm suggesting that what, what, we, what we need to be thinking about very carefully in assessment is, again, why do we do it? What purpose does it serve? Where would it best be placed? What kind of assessment would best lend itself to doing to doing to 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 to, the, to allowing us to make the kinds of claims we want to make about student learning or about, for example, our own practice. So the distinction for me between formative and summative is a really critical one because it speaks to the overall orientation that we have about assessment in our discipline and the role that assessment plays in the in the development of students from undergraduate through to postgraduate and on hopefully to becoming research students in some cases. Really critical, plays a really critical role. Okay, I'm not going to go through a vast amount of theory this morning. I'm going to assume that if people are interested in this area, you can dip into this at your at your own your own spaces and in your own times. But basically, there are four bodies of theory that I think play an incredibly important role in understanding what we do in assessment, whether we do it in online spaces or face-to-face -face ones. There is the notion of learning potential which arises out of Vygotsky and others' work. And so what that's telling us primarily is that assessment serves a developmental view. It's about trying to understand what happens in an assessment event when that produces change in learning, either in conceptions of learning, in applications of learning, in critical reasoning, in evaluation of the like. So therefore, and I think online spaces give us real opportunities to use this, if we can create these kinds of spaces, in, uh, these opportunities in online spaces, students can demonstrate change. They can demonstrate real conceptual change in an online space, for example, through, through a task that we might place in the online environment. <coughs> and then we can carefully monitor students' feedback, responses to that task, and be able to give mediation and feedback to those. It's on record. It's on record on mass scale, too. If, if, if all students participate. It's also potentially possible to separate students into subgroups in that way in accordance with how, how they responded to particular tasks. I'll try and go into some of that detail as we go along through the course. Social constructivism as a perspective basically tells us that we need to be thinking in assessment about the alignment between the out, what, we, what we want, the objective in the course, what we hope students will learn, and what will be evidence of that learning through the particular assessment. So there's a line-up, an alignment between those three components. And that, for me, again, becomes particularly critical in the online space. If we are clear about what it is that we want students to learn, we are clear about the evidence that they will produce that will be a demonstration of that learning, and we understand the inferences that we can draw from that, from what they demonstrate, we, we potentially, or really, have an opportunity for alignment across those, across those components. Often, in our own work in assessment, academics in my own institution, are very, we are very academic facing, we're self-facing in terms of what we, our purpose is for assessment. So we look at what is it that we want to achieve through setting a particular assessment, without necessarily thinking what is it that students should be demonstrating through that assessment. It's a subtle but fundamentally important shift in focus. And I think the online space, again, gives us real opportunity to be student-focused. We set tasks, we can set developmental tasks, we can set tasks that we don't necessarily have to give marks to, so, so that takes us away from the burden of responsibility around marking huge amounts of work. We can set tasks in an online space where we can provide feedback or we can provide mediation that students can respond to and students themselves can give feedback to one another in those spaces. And that I think is a particular affordance in that space. Not only is it an affordance,